Hello dear students, welcome to Vision Pharmacy. In our today's video, we are going to study regarding propellants. So before we start with our today's video, please do like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon for getting updates on upcoming videos. So let's begin. Students, you know that the aerosols is a pressurized dosage form containing one or more therapeutic active ingredients which upon activation emits a fine dispersion of liquid and or solid material in a gaseous medium. And you also know that propellants are one of the most important component of aerosols. So let us discuss today about this propellants. So firstly, the propellant is responsible for developing the proper pressure within the container and it expels the product when the valve is opened and aids in the atomization or foam production of the product. Then the propellant is generally regarded as heart of the aerosol packages. Then the next is the propellants act as a solvent and as a diluent as and has much to do with determining the characteristics of the product. Then the next is classification of propellants. So you can classify propellants. The first one is liquefied gases such as chlorofluorocarbons, then hydrochlorofluorocarbons and hydrocarbons. Then the another classification or the second classification is compressed gas. The compressed gas examples are nitrogen, then nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide. Now let us discuss that how this aerosol or propellants work. Okay, so how aerosol tin works. So the first is when we press the nozzle forcing the air to move outside then the release of air causes the sudden drop in air pressure inside the tin. The air inside the top of the tin is at highest pressure than air in the tube so it pushes down on the product concentrate. Further. The product concentrate is then forced up the tube towards the mechanism for release. The product concentrate then leaves the tin in form of spray. So this is how the aerosol tin works. Okay, moving further. Now let us compare the difference between the most used propellants. So the first one is liquefied propellants and the second one is compressed gas propellants. So first about the liquefied propellants, so it is an integral part of the formula results in smaller finer particles whereas compressed gas uh, propellants acts like piston containing large wet particles however there is some soluble with carbon dioxide. Then the next point in liquefied propellant is contains pressure through life of can whereas in compressed gas propellant drop in pressure through life of can okay then the next point is about liquefied propellant that large temperature change affect pressure whereas temperature change have little effect on pressure if it is compressed gas propellant okay you can also add one more point in liquefied propellants that it is a uh, cost it cost varies whereas your uh, compressed gas propellants they are low cost okay then moving to the next point the next point is about the nomenclature okay so to refer easily to the fluorinated hydrocarbon a relatively simple system of nomenclature was developed by american society of refrigerating engineers in 1957 according to this all propellants are designated by three digits that is zero 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 the first digit is one less than the number of carbon atom in the compound that is c minus one the second digit is one more than number of hydrogen atom in the compound that is h plus one then the last digit represents the number of fluorine atom okay that is f whichever pres uh, the number that is present in that respective formula then further the number of chlorine atom 
for for chlorofluorocarbons in the compound is found by substituting the sum of the fluorine and the hydrogen atom from total number of atoms that can be added to saturate the carbon chain okay so this is how nomenclature of propellants is done now moving to the last slide so this is regarding the physical properties of propellant the first one is solubility so generally they are non polar then boiling point is below 24 degrees celsius and density is less than 1 so thank you students for watching this video till end soon we'll be meeting in another video best luck everyone